I actually had recorded a very different video, but you know what? I think I had an epiphany as I was uploading things and as I was thinking about a lot of the different types of topics that I've been wanting to cover over the last few days, but just again, time. Time is my enemy. Thus is the life of an activist slash um, single dad who is actually taking care of his child. Which, trust me, this will be part of a theme in and of itself tonight because I've been hearing a lot of stupidity coming out of people over men, dads, that whole thing. But this isn't about that. GameStop, which some people consider the uh, bane of the gaming industry and the secondhand gaming industry, and I can't say that they don't necessarily deserve their reputation, but me personally, they haven't pissed in my Cheerios. I haven't had bad dealings with them, and yes, I have some friends who work for them, but that doesn't mean jack. I haven't gotten any special treatment from my friends or my manager friend. Um, I've been maybe prevy to some insider information, somewhat on the company, but also somewhat on um, the state of the affairs of the gaming industry's love-hate relationship with uh, game. Uh, GameStop in and of itself, and really, you know, I, I'm not going to stand up here and say that nobody has a right to be upset with GameStop. A lot of the hate comes from former employees who were wrongfully screwed by GameStop in, in ways that, that make little or no sense to me. Uh, there are people who were screwed over just in trade-ins in general. Myself, for the last three years, at least, I've had good dealings with GameStop. They've been very good to me compared to years prior. And I, I personally like a brick-and-mortar place. I like places I can go where I can shoot the breeze with some of these employees, talk about things, and have them sometimes point out when I'm wrongfully being a fan tart myself. Yes, even I can fall into that category now and again. But no, I don't try to stay in that category because that kind of mentality sickens me to my core, and it should. But... They're listing mainly just lackluster sales from last year. And you know why? It's it's the industry. It's it's not entirely GameStop's fault, though they are probably contributing partially to their own downfall, as is the industry. But let's face it, we've got Nintendo with lackluster sales of the Wii U thinking, oh, we haven't taught people what the Wii U is enough to capture people showing how absolutely out of touch with reality Nintendo is. You have people uh, who are barely all that caring about next-gen, who aren't just not caring about next-gen because they, like me, they're upset with the business practices of the gaming industry, they're just tired of it in general. They're looking at their wallets and going, well, why do I want a PS4? Why do I want a new 360? Meanwhile, you've got only the devs are really belly aching about, oh, why is this console cycle so long? We want new game consoles because we're fed up with our current toys. We want new ones. Can you see why I get upset at the gaming industry's ideas about the gaming consoles and their cycles? I'm not ready for a PS4, even if I were still hyper excited about the gaming industry and trying to buy into it. You know, I barely want, uh, I'm barely excited about the Wii U, except for I just saw a thing where somebody has made a program that will allow you to play Super Nintendo emulators using the game Wii U gamepad. Now that, that's added value. That would at least be a, worth $175 for a single Wii U gamepad, even if you don't own a Wii U. Yes, it's that expensive. Yes, this is part of what I've been talking about. Uh, Freaking game controller for a next-gen next console costs $175, half the cost of the freaking system. That's not value to me. But yet, 
I'm seeing little things here and there that pique my interest enough to, to spend one last time on a Wii U. But you see these lackluster sales. You see a gaming industry that just seems to completely ignore the people. Go to the latest Sack It to Me on PlayStation's blog dealing with Little Big Planet 2, Little Big Planet Karting, Little Big Planet Vita. Check the, the constant talk about how upset people are that Little Big Planet Karting does not work as advertised and has not worked as advertised since it came out. Now, are people still making do and making phenomenal, fantastical levels, some of which have nothing to do with kart racing? Yes. And there is a piece of that game that is absolutely genius. But in, in terms of both United Front and Sony doing anything to appease the, the now growing voices of dissent in the community, they're not doing a thing. They're not even commenting. When it's all negative on their board, they're no longer commenting to the people who are becoming the vocal majority instead of the vocal minority. Because they don't care. They didn't care with me and the Vita. So I didn't care about the Vita anymore. They didn't care with the consumer and their experience. So I no longer cared about them anymore. And, you know, the, the Vita was the last straw. But really, these lackluster AAA titles that are oftentimes broken on the PS3 and even 360 just have me wondering, why the heck do I need a PS4? Why do I need a 360? And moreover, in this economy, why do I need new games? Why do I even need to trade my old game, uh, games? I could go on and on and on, but this is a symptom. This is a bit of what I've been telling you guys for months about how this, this industry is pushing itself towards a crash. And now it's not just me. Jim Sterling is talking about it. I have people who I haven't even met who are talking about it because of their experiences with the 3DS and the Vita have turned them off to the gaming industry as a whole. And I've already talked about the consumer experience of both of those handhelds and how neither is really living up to what we used to have with the older systems, what we used to have with the older handhelds. And the fact that, again, these companies are out of touch and oftentimes, not unlike Capcom, basically lambasting the fan bases and acting as if this is how professional adult companies are supposed to operate. And for the longest time now, they've gotten their money. And it's not lasting. It's not lasting anymore. And I'm hearing such lackluster responses to the fact that we are going to likely get, or is almost all but confirmed, that we are going to get a PS4 announcement and an Xbox 360 announcement. And most of it's met with, meh. Plus you have the PC crowd who are very happy with their PCs, and rightfully so. I'm not going to trash PCs or PC gaming. In fact, right now I'm in the middle of a PC mod, and I'm trying to drum up support uh, from people who have know-how so that I can get my mods into more games and infiltrate more communities with stuff that, when it's presented, oftentimes becomes very explosive and is stuff that could be done on consoles, but consoles are so afraid of piracy and their bottom line that they aren't allowing their machines to be open enough that we could have modding on them unless we mod them ourselves. Hot swap on Xbox 360, anybody? As well as the, the fact that people have, have hacked the Wii and enabled people to allow Smash Brothers Brawl to have characters that Smash Brothers Brawl never had. With limited success at times, but the fact that it exists shows the potential of these consoles. The console, the, the potential that, these indus, that this industry is not interested in opening itself up to. And then you've got people who are being held up as visionaries, like Gabe Newall, who complains about uh, the limitations of console, gaming consoles, and then goes on to make a Steam box, which he had himself admits is going to be a limited platform itself. Contradict much, Gabe? 
But again, I'm not into trying to draw battle lines and trying to say that you have to be on my side. I'm just saying do the research yourself. Look at the articles that are showing the decline that aren't just simply sensationalist media. See for yourself that this stuff with GameStop is symptomatic of the bigger problem. Part of it is the economy. I don't want to sound like I'm some sort of Alex Jones conspiratist saying, this is a symptom that the, that the system is crashing. No! But it certainly is pointing more towards what I've been talking about as being real and not just me being an alarmist. Look, I love this industry to death. If it wasn't for, in many ways, PC gaming, some of my friends I know would not have a job modeling for certain software houses because of their love of PC gaming and the creativity that it allowed being a more open platform it's led to these people getting noticed and getting jobs and and being able to move out of their houses or their parents houses and being able to do something with their life something that they love but if the infighting doesn't stop, if the detachment from reality doesn't end, if these business practices go on the way that they are Eventually, even the most hardcore MLG people are going to realize that they're paying money into an industry that simply does not care about them, nor does it care about quality. It releases games and then abandons them. And then we're supposed to be happy about that. We're supposed to be grateful. And then we're sacked with so many security precautions on a legally paid for product that we're treated as if we're, we're criminals when we're legal, legally paying customers, where it would be less of a pain in the butt, simply deterrent. But some of us refuse to do this on the grounds that we're trying to help out the industry, even if the industry does not seem like it cares if we try to help them out with our money. I'm done. I may be still doing the Wii U stuff, but I am so done with this industry. And I'm choosing to participate. I'm choosing my level of volunteerism when it comes to the gaming industry. So I'm not surprised by this. I'm a little saddened because I kind of, as I said, I've had a good experience with GameStop. That doesn't invalidate those of you who have not. And I'm not going to say that my experience trumps yours because that would be stupid and a fallacy in and of itself. I'm simply saying, though, that this does make me a bit sad. I like GameStop now. I didn't like past GameStop, but this is the symptom of a greater problem, and it's one I think the gaming industry is going to continue to ignore until the dollar signs really stop flowing in.